Today I've got this nice result that I found in the Mathematical Gazette that allows us to write the natural logarithm via a product of nested radicals that become more nested as we move down the product. So our main tool here will be something that I'll call the Archimedean mean. And how do we define this? Well, we'll start with two numbers, a naught and b naught. They need to be positive real numbers. And then we'll define two sequences, a n and b n. And a n plus one will be equal to the harmonic mean of the previous two terms. So by previous two terms, I mean one from each sequence. So that simplifies to two times a n b n over a n plus b n. And then b n plus one will be the geometric mean of a n plus one and b n. And then this Archimedean mean of the two starting numbers will be the limit of the a n sequence or the b n sequence. Those limits are equivalent, but we won't check that. And then here's some nice facts. So if you do this Archimedean mean object on 2 root 3 and 3, you get pi. And this is equivalent to the way that Archimedes evaluated pi by looking at limits of n-gons. Of course, n-gons limit to circles, and also you can easily calculate a precise value or an exact value for the circumference of an n-gon, you know, using the Pythagorean theorem and such. Then next, if you've got this ordering, uh, 0 is less than a naught and a naught is less than b naught, then we've got this Archimedean mean in terms of this hyperbolic cosine function. So that'll actually be of particular use for our purposes. Okay, so let's get towards our main result. Okay, so the first thing that we'd like to do is play around with the expression of bn plus one a little bit. So let's write it in terms of its definition. So we've got root a n plus one times bn. But that motivates us to write a n plus 1 using its definition. So let's see, we'll have the square root of 2 a n times b n squared over a n plus b n, where we've got a b n squared now because we've got a b n built into the a n plus 1. Okay, but now let's take the quotient of b n with b n plus 1 and see what happens. So the motivation here is to, well, put b n plus 1 in the denominator to get this sum of a n and b n up to the numerator where it's easier to work with, and then to perhaps simplify some of the b n terms out of there. Okay, so anyway, we'll have b n times the square root. We have a n plus b n over 2 times a n times b n squared. But that bn being squared in the denominator is equivalent to it being not squared in the numerator. So that makes those two terms cancel. Then after that, we can split up this via the sum to get the square root of 1 half plus 1 half times, let's see, bn over an. So that gives us this nice way of looking at the quotient of consecutive bn terms. But what we'd really like to do is get this somehow built so that there are no a terms in there. So this is like a self-describing sequence. So let's see how we could do that. So let's note the following. So let's look at bn over an and let's apply our rule for bn. So let's see, that's gonna be the square root of a n times b n minus one over a n, again, using our defining relation for b n. But we can do some simplification here and we'll get the square root of b n minus one over a n. That's just simple algebraic simplification. But now let's multiply the numerator as well as the denominator by a bn minus 1. That's going to give us a bn minus 1 in the numerator, and then we'll have those two objects under the square root now. So I guess we multiplied by the square root of bn minus 1. Oh, but let's look at that denominator. Well, that's exactly what we had here, which was bn. So this is bn minus 1 over uh, bn. Great. So let's see. Well, this is our bn over an. 
we wrote it as that quotient over there, bn minus one over bn. So that means we can take this and replace it with this quotient of our two b terms. But now we can apply this rule over and over and over again. So for instance, we have bn over bn plus one can be written as the square root of one half plus one half times the square root of one half plus one half bn minus two over bn minus one, where we just used our rule two times. But then we could like keep going maybe all the way to the so-called ground and we'll get one half plus one half times the square root, one half plus one half times the square root and then one half plus all the way down to plus one half times the square root of one half plus one half times the last term. And I'll call that last term b minus one over b zero. But you might say, well, what's b sub minus one if we're starting over here at b sub zero? Well, we can easily define b sub minus one using our recursion backwards. So we could look at b zero, which is equal to the square root of a zero times b minus one. Again, reversing our recursion. But that allows us to easily solve and we'll get b minus one equals b naught squared over a naught. So there, we've got this expression for b minus one that we can use wherever we need it. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's see where that can take us. So we just developed a method for writing the quotient of two consecutive terms from our b sequence in terms of a nested radical. And now we'd like to use that to find a nice expression for this Archimedean mean. So let's look at the following. We've got b sub minus one over Archimedean mean of a naught b naught. Well, that's gonna be equal to this limit as n goes to infinity of b sub minus one over bn. But we'd like to get some sort of ratios in there of consecutive terms. And so that'll involve multiplying by lots of copies of one. So I'll write this as b sub minus one over b zero, b zero over b one, b one over b two, so on and so forth, all the way up to we have bn minus one over bn will be the last one. So here are the copies of one we multiplied in here. We've got b naught over b naught, b1 over b1, we've got a b2 over b2, so on and so forth. But now we can apply our you know, nested recursion calculation we did to each of these as each of these are ratios of consecutive b terms. So let's see where that'll leave us. Well, so we'll have, well this b minus one over b naught we can't really do anything with, but this b naught over b one is a um, you know, single nest. So we've got the square root of one half plus one half b minus one over b naught. And then the next one will be the square root of one half plus one half times the square root of one half plus one half b minus one over b naught. Then we're gonna have an infinite product of these terms where each further piece of our product is nested you know, deeper. Okay, so now let's see how we can tie this in with the natural log. So here's this expression that we got on the last board just solved for this Archimedean mean. So we've got this B naught term in the numerator and then that infinite product in the denominator. Now we'd like to form some sort of relationship between this and the natural log. So let's see how we could do this. So let's observe that two times the hyperbolic cosine of the natural log of the square root of x by the definition of the hyperbolic cosine gives us e to the natural log of the square root of x plus e to the minus natural log of the square root of x. But then applying the inverse relationship between the exponential function and the logarithmic function will give us the square root of x plus one over the square root of x, which simplifies to x plus one over the square root of x. But now we can take this equation that we've just formed, this two hyperbolic cosine natural log of square root of x 
equals x plus 1 over root x and fairly easily solve it for the natural log. And we'll get that the natural log of x is equal to, let's see, 2 times the inverse hyperbolic cosine. I guess I should point out that we are using the fact that this natural log of root x is 1 half natural log of x via logarithm rules. And then, let's see, what's in the argument of this inverse hyperbolic cosine? Well, it's x plus 1 over 2 radical x. So something like that. But now let's also observe the following trick that involves this second fact that we had at the beginning of this Archimedean mean. And that is if you take this arc of 2 root x and x plus 1, you'll get the following. And this is via that expression that involved this hyperbolic cosine. So you'll have 2 root x times x plus 1 over x minus 1. I'll let you like work through the details of that, you know, fairly simple algebraic manipulation if you need to. And then this hyperbolic cosine inverse of, let's see, what is it? x plus 1 over 2 root x. But if you look at this carefully, we've got this 2 and this hyperbolic cosine of x plus 1 over 2 root x, but that's exactly our natural log object. So that leaves us with root x, x plus 1 over x minus 1 times the natural log of x. But then we can finally solve for this natural log, and we'll have natural log of x equals x minus 1 over root x times x plus 1 times this Archimedean mean of 2 root x, x plus 1. And then the last step here is to apply our rule that we developed earlier. And after some simplification, we'll have this x minus 1 in the numerator, and then we'll have the square root of x, and then the square root of 1 half plus x plus 1 over 4 root x. So that's like our maybe least nested term. And then our next nested term, which is nested too deep, will be 1 half plus 1 half square root of 1 half plus x plus 1 over 4 root x. And then that product is infinite, and at each stage of that product, you increase the depth of the nesting of the radicals. Okay, so there we have it. We've produced an expression for the logarithm that involves this really nice infinite product, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.